study tonight. Amen. How many feel good tonight? Yes, sir. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus if you feel good. If you don't feel good, clap them anyway. Hallelujah. Somebody said, how, how, well, when it comes to giving, you have to, have to give till it hurts. I said, no, you give till it feels good. You don't give till it hurts. You give till it feels good. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 13. Brother Mooney, if you would, please, sir. 13, 14, and, and 15. I won't be all night. I'll just, I'll just take my liberty, my time. When God gets through, I'll try to quit. Brother T.F. Tenney always said to us, he said, it's better to quit when everybody wants you to go on than go on when everybody wants you to quit. And so I'll try, to, I'll try to honor that tonight. Amen. And when they were come in, verse 13, they went up into, up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Phaeus and Simon and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication and with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his disciples. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. And I want you to notice in the, in the reading, I tell you what, well, let's pray and you be seated. Father, bless the message. Bless your children tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, Lord, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I want you to notice in our reading tonight, they went up into an upper room. And that's where the Holy Ghost was being poured out. We preach about the upper room a lot. And that's where they were all gathered together, as I read, in an upper room. And then, he, and then in verse 14, it says, and they continued in one accord. In other words, they were there, and, that's, and they stayed there. They didn't uh, uh, venture from that. They, so they was in an upper room, and it, and it named off all the ones that were there. Uh, and, and that, of course, there was others because it goes on to say in verse number 15 that it was, the number was about 120. And so they went to an upper room, and they continued, in, and then they continued in one accord. In, in other words, they had everything common. They was, they was all together. Uh, you know, they wasn't, there wasn't any, I'll just put it in Ireland, there was no backbiting, no, no arguing, no, no fussing, or no debating. Uh, no wondering if the fish was going to be biting the next day, or they was all in one accord. They were together, and these are these are things that are important to what I want to say tonight. So they were in an upper room, and then they they continued in one accord. They were together in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. So I want to talk for just a few minutes on, tonight about an upper room. An upper room. That's where the Holy Ghost. That's where they were gathered together. Now, I don't know if it was anything special about this particular room. Uh, I don't know if it, the size was, you know, anything special. I, I just know the Bible just called it an upper room. And I'm, I'm assuming it meant uh, an upstairs room. I, I don't know that. I, I, I haven't searched that out. But it was something about this room uh, or was it something about the God of the room? And I want to talk tonight about an upper room. About, about, I, want to, 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 I want you to look at the people that were in the upper room. Uh, we, we talk about this, and, and uh, the people that were there, they, uh, we should not look to them. We should look to them as just ordinary, usual type people. They, they was not a special people. Uh, they, they, they were just men and women just like you and I. Uh, they, they were just common people. Uh, they were, some, were, some of them were fishermen, and, and some of them probably were farmers. Some of them probably raised corn, and some were probably raised wheat or, or, or whatever. I don't suppose, I, I'm supposing that most all of them raised something. And they were just ordinary men and women. There was not nothing special about them. Uh, God steps seemingly to me that all through the scripture that God kind of steps over the elite people and chooses common everyday people. 
and just uh, you know, I, I know the Apostle Paul. Uh, he was a uh, he was he called it himself. He said he was born out of season. In other words, he, he, his calling was different. Way I, way I understood that his calling was different than some. He was a very eloquent man. He was a very smart man, educated man. But the, some of them even said they were ignorant and unlearned men. Okay, they were just common, everyday people. They did just ordinary, just like you and I. They, 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 not, well, not this, but Jesus bypassed everybody else. That, that, that's what's amazing to me, that when we talk about the Holy Ghost and talk about how God fills people with the Holy Ghost, uh, to some, and you talk about it, Brother Mark made, very, uh, made a very great uh, uh, message last night at prayer service about how that you have to, people, there's some people don't even understand about the Holy Ghost. Some people don't, don't, there's people who don't even know who Jesus is. And, and uh, they don't understand about the Holy Ghost. So when you mention the Holy Ghost to some people, they don't have a clue what you're saying uh, or what you're talking about. Uh, I told somebody one time at work at the welding shop that we were apostolic. And, and he said, you're apple what? And, and he had no idea what I was even talking about. So, so these people, these people were, were uh, just ordinary people. They, they was nothing special about them. And, and, but here's the thing about the upper room people. These upper room people, I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking about a special uh, a move of God where people are gathered together in prayer. You know what the church needs more than anything I can think of? The church needs a baptizing in the Holy Ghost. The church needs to be baptized. People need the Holy Ghost. We, we're getting people in the church, and we thank God for them. Man, I'm just, I'm just somebody said, I'm pick, I am tickled pink about people beginning to come, to the, come to, into the church but they and and they've repented. I, I'm I'm I almost know they have, and, and they and some has even went on to be water baptized, and 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 that's great. But they don't need to stop there. They need to keep going. That we need a baptizing of the Holy Ghost. We need to become upper room people where the baptism of the Holy Ghost is being poured out in our church services every time we come to church. God needs to take the Holy Ghost and bless this, just this little prayer, this little uh, Bible study that I'm trying to give us. God, the Holy Ghost has to bless that and anoint that or we're just sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Jesus bypasses a lot of people to get to people that will listen to him. When church, the church needs a Pentecost, another baptizing. And let me tell this congregation something. It's not out of our reach. It can be done. We can gather together and everybody start receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It can happen. It happened in an upper room. It was a hun about 120 and it, it's not out of our reach. We've got 120. If I could just get the other 80 here, we've got them. Are you understanding? It, having a Pentecost is not. I know we have a day of Pentecost first Sunday, close to the first Sunday in June. It marks the day of Pentecost as close as they could get it on the calendar. But I'm not talking about just a day. I'm talking about a baptizing in the Holy Ghost where people speak in tongues and magnify God and worship God and where multitudes come together and are confounded because they hear people speaking in a language that they, that they don't understand. I'm talking about a baptizing. The church today needs a visitation of God's spirit. Somebody ought to help me preach. I'm not talking to Baptist people here tonight. I'm talking about the Pentecostal apostolic church. Somebody needs to help me. The church needs a visitation from the Lord that would cause a Pentecost. That would cause a move of God in our, in our midst. Hallelujah. But not everyone wants it. That's the problem. Too many people are satisfied with the status quo. Preacher, don't wake me up. 
Don't, don't tell me how dirty my life is. Don't preach against my sin. If you do, I'll quit paying my tithes. Don't you do that. Everybody don't want to move. God, let me tell you something. If you go through the scripture, there's always been ten against two. It's, it always happens. It, it always, God's people seem to be always the minority. But God's presence, God's spirit moves among those that wants a move of God in their life. But not everybody. Many saw the works. People followed him as long as he was blessing loaves and fishes. They followed him when he was calling dead people out of the tomb. They followed him when he was spitting in people's eyes and telling them to go and wash, and they came back seeing. They followed him when he could mix up a little bit of mud and heal the blinded eyes. They followed him when they could let the crippled man down from the roof's top and let him down in front of them and Jesus healed him and told him to take up his bed and walk. They followed him. They followed him when he done all, when he reached out to a man that had a withered hand and he said, stretch out your hand and he stretched it out and Jesus spoke and the hand was received, was made whole again. They followed him. But when he came along and said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no part with me. But let me tell you something. And they flushed like a herd of quail. Yes, yes, yes. A flock of quail. The Bible said many of them turned and walked with him no more. He turned to his disciples and said, Will you go away also? They said, We not, we don't, where are we going to go? We know that thou hast the keys of eternal life. Everybody don't want. A move of God like I'm talking about. Because it gets you. It When you get start getting into the. When you start getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. It starts separating you from things of the world. It'll start, it, it'll start you to see it. See what sin is all about. Somebody made the statement the other day. I don't know who it was now. I think it was from this pulpit. That. There's hardly no sinners anymore. It's just people just are not sinners anymore. They're just good people. And that may be true, but we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. And many saw his works and, and, and heard his teaching and turned and went their own way. Uh, like James talked about beholding yourself in a glass and forgetting what manner of person you are. And turning and walking away. And many, many have done that. They looked steadfastly as he ascended into heaven. They, these followers did. Over 500 saw Jesus Christ after his resurrection. Over 500 saw him. Listen carefully to me. But only 120 went to the upper room. Wonder where the other 380 was. I'm telling you, everybody don't want it. Just because they say they do, they don't. 500 fought, uh, saw him, but only 120 went to an upper room. And there was a whole lot less. Somebody said there was three at the cross. Are you understanding? Everybody is not interested in it. Jesus told them to tarry. Until you be endued with power from on high. Tarry there. And tarry means more than just being there. It means more than that. They all, I, I, I emphasize, they continued in one accord in prayer. They was not worried about what was going on the next day. I, well, I got to go to work. Or I, you know, and I understand all of that. But they, but they continued in prayer. It meant they stayed steadfastly. And in prayer, they waited for the power from God from on high that day that, that Jesus promised them that was going to happen. And in, in prayer, they continued. The meeting continued on. It just kept going and kept going for to prayer. They pray in one accord. Prayer. They kept going until the promise of Jesus that He promised full, was fulfilled. I don't know how many days it was. I, I can't remember. 
several days, 10 days, 20 days, but they continued. They tarried. They waited. We, we're too big of a hurry. I, I'm number one on that. I'm number one on that. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. We don't have time. If God don't move, when we get ready, we just go out to wait till next time. I mean, I mean, man, I got to take a load of hay to Alabama. I don't need no blowout. Are well, you understanding? We, we, sometimes we just we, we get too, too big of a hurry. They continue. You say, well, they probably didn't even have a job. Well, a lot of people today don't have one either. You couldn't give them one. I, I suppose I'm going. I'm going to be nice tonight now. I could say, you know, the only way you could hide their food staff would put it in their work boot. And they'd never find it. Somebody said one time, <laughs> brother, Brian, uh, brother somebody one time said he brought his wife a, a uh, Christmas present and he wanted to hide it so he hid it in the oven because she never cooked no way so she wasn't going to find it. Now, I, they, they continue. <laughs> okay. They continue and they prayed. They sought the Lord. Oh, we're all bad about it. Come on, I'm preaching to you. I, I'm, I'm going to get worse than that. I'm going to get harder than that. Sometime before we call a prayer service before the, the, before the uh, back row can get up here, the front row and went back and sat down. Come on, we don't, we're, not, we're not praying like, like, the, like they prayed in the upper room. They continued in one accord in prayer. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. And it set upon each of them. Listen, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It will happen. It ain't out of our reach. Come on. We don't, the United Pentecostal Church International does not have a monopoly on the Holy Ghost. It's for you. It's for me. It's for our children, our grandchildren. Come on, somebody. It's for everybody. It's the Holy Ghost that Jesus is giving away and you need it. You need it. If you don't have it, you've got to have it. They knew they needed the Holy Ghost just like Jesus had promised. They prayed with hearts in one accord. Many days, many days from the ascension to the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, they continued. They just kept on, kept on. The prayer meeting was kept alive by those earnest men and women who stayed together and prayed and sought the Lord. I've heard, I've heard talk. I heard Cindy Hunt, Sister Cindy Hunt, pastor's wife of the church in Collierville, Brother Hunt. I, I know I was there. I was a witness right over here in this building, right over here, right down on this side of the building, right here about this altar. One morning at 10 o'clock when the service started on, uh, for Sunday school, she nine years old she was. She broke down in the Holy Spirit, and she came to that altar, and it was 12 o'clock when God baptized her in the Holy Ghost. We didn't have Sunday school. We didn't have preaching. I ain't real sure we even had singing. But you know what? We had a penny cost that Sunday morning. It ain't out of our reach. We can reach and get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what those professors say. I don't care what the TV evangelists say. I, it doesn't bother me. All I am interested in is what this says. Thank you, Jesus. The prayer meeting just kept on going. Where are the people who would pray continually until, until. Where's our prayer warriors? Until. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, Acts 2 and 4, as the Spirit gave utterance. Will we ever have a meeting where everybody is filled with the Holy Ghost? Will, there, will it ever happen? No one up, up until this point, in that upper room, no one had ever had that experience before. There hadn't been a book written about it except this book. 
There hadn't been a, to- a tape made. Nobody had listened to a radio broadcast about it. Nobody had told them. They continued. They stayed. We preach our guts out. We preach sometimes to we're hoarse. You say, well, that's your fault. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. And can't convince people. Cannot convince people. The Holy Ghost is for you. It's yours. It's for your children. It's for your grandchildren. They continued. They continued. No books. No tape. They had no instructors. They had nobody to pat them on the back. Say, come on, hold on, or turn loose. They had nobody to shake them. You ain't supposed to shake them to start with. They had nobody to instruct them to how to get the Holy Ghost. You know what they did? They continued. They prayed. They were together. They were in one accord. They prayed. They didn't worry about nothing else. They prayed. They didn't worry about mom-in-law or dad-in-law. They prayed. Nobody instructed a Billy Poo. They just prayed. Why? They had a promise. Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with power from on high. They took him at his word, ladies and gentlemen. They continued. They prayed. They had no books. They had nothing. They had nobody to explain nothing. And all of a sudden, I'm not even going to quote it again, it came from heaven. It was sent down. It wasn't worked up. It was sent down from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. But the upper room people walked where no one ever walked before. Isn't that that amazing? No one had ever been there before. It had not been poured out in that measure. They'd heard about it. Somebody talked, Peter preached about it. They heard all about it, but they'd never, never been there. But since that time, Multitudes have walked that same road. God has filled multitudes of people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you got people saying you can't have it. It's not for the church. Well, they don't even believe in healing. They don't even believe God can heal anymore. I don't even know why they bother going to church. Just to be honest with you, multitudes, multitudes. No one had ever been there before, but multitudes followed right in those footsteps. It was amazing. Amazement just filled the air. They were amazed and, and marveled. You know, I'm telling you what I think they said. <gasps> what is this? What meaneth this? Some mocked like they do today. Said these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, said, Priest, ye men of Judea, ye men of Jerusalem and Judea, be it known unto you this day, and hearken unto my words. These men are not drunk as ye suppose they are, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon my servants and on my my handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit that day, saith the Lord, and they shall prophesy. This is that the prophet, or the apostle Peter said. This is what the prophet Joel had prophesied about. Hallelujah. Went on down. He just keeps on preaching. He preached and preached and preached and preached and kept preaching, kept preaching, and said, you took Christ and you crucified him. You desired a murderer to be released unto you, and you've asked the pilot to crucify the God of glory, and he did. And they said, now, they said, what must we do? And he said, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Honey, you can't sidestep baptism. I don't care what the doctors of the, of the whatever. You can't sidestep baptism. You've got to go into watery grave of baptism. You've got to have your sins washed away. got to have them remitted. 
Does anybody understand it? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Do you know we're in a crooked generation? That's what that word means, crooked, according to one writer. We're there. It was amazing. Some said that, that man, this is, they're full of new wine. I've done, man, I done messed up these notes big time. Let me see if I can find something where I ain't been yet. One thing, as I said, the church needs more than anything, needs people that will pray until prayer warriors. We had a lady come to the church there in Memphis. It's before I got married, before we got married. And I, I, I went to church, but that's about it. I went to church because she did. And I'd go to the altar and pray. And, and uh, we had this lady come to the church. Uh, uh, was in a wheelchair. And uh, she only had one leg. So she preached from a wheelchair. And she, she, they, they kept her off the platform. She'd take that one foot, and she'd roll that wheelchair anywhere she wanted to go, man, back and forth, back and forth. Preaching like it was going out of style, I'm talking about. I've come to that altar, man, and I heard her tell that pastor. She said, I wished I could get in that floor with that man. Said, I'd pray him through to the Holy Ghost. Man, let me tell you something. We need a prayer warrior. We need people that ain't ashamed to pray that ain't afraid to upset the program, throw the program out the door. We need people that will not, oh, we need, mm, I, if I was a preacher, I'd preach tonight. We need preachers that can't be bought. We need pastors that ain't for sale. We need pastors that needs to be delivered from the opinion of a church board. We need men of God that preach the word of God just like it lay, just like that they continued in the apostles' doctrine and prayer and praising God. And God added to the church daily such as should be saved. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses of him. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. Watch. He had shed forth this which ye now see and hear. You saw it and you heard it. What did they hear, ladies and gentlemen? They heard them speaking in tongues. And they saw how God was blessing them. Jesus honored their obedience. He said, I will build my church. Watch, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I don't know about you, honey, but I'm in a church tonight. I'm not talking about this local assembly. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. I'm in a church tonight that hell cannot stop. There's going to be revival. It's going to happen. Judgment's coming to America. If it sure is twice two's four. Judgment is coming if America don't repent. But take no, no, don't, don't, don't misunderstand. There will be a move of God. It will happen. It will happen. Jesus honors it. Now these upper room people that I preach it about did more than just claim an experience. They held to Jesus. They submitted to his authority and received his promise. They did more than just tarried in an upper room. We're in the last days, children, last day. The church which we are a part of must, must keep marching. Have you, have you even noticed what's going on around us? Have you noticed the shooting, the robbing? They was telling about all the police up here at Walmart, was it? And out here, was it, was it, uh, uh, Kro no, it wasn't Kroger. It was somewhere out here, Kroger's not here anyway. It was somewhere north of town. 
police call. Was it last night, Sister Sue, that we we saw that, or you saw that as you was coming to pray? So there was police everywhere. Been been a shooting or robbery or, or something of that sort. Did you you understand? Did you if you do you ever watch the news? That, do you ever listen? Do you, do you ever turn on your, your television, your radio? I know you got them. Uh, did you ever turn them on and listen to what's going on in Memphis, Tennessee? Did you ever, did you ever listen? You, do you hear it, Brother T? Brother T, do you, can't, do you, can't you try to tell me we're not living in a critical times? You know, it ain't even hardly safe to go out on the streets. Are you understanding me? It ain't safe to go to the park. You couldn't take your child to the park and and uh, and enjoy an afternoon, a Saturday afternoon in a park with with your children for fear of somebody coming by with a gun and just spraying bullets. The, a brother down at the school told me one day one of the uh, 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 teachers there at the sped department it, there had been a shooting there in Memphis and a little child, just a baby, playing in the floor. You might remember it here a few years ago, and 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 this person just drove down the street with a with what they call anything Uzis them automatic and just spraying the houses just shooting and a bullet went through the through the door of the room and hit that child and killed that baby he said you know what he said people they don't even have a target they don't even have a target they're just shooting just just you know, spraying people let me tell you something if you ain't ready to meet God you better get ready you don't never know what's going to happen when you walk out of this building tonight, you never know what's going to take place. These upper room people, they had an experience. They, they accepted the Lord. We're living in days when the church must, must keep marching, keep living for God. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever, don't even think about quitting. Boy, if you're thinking about quitting, you're, you're on the wrong page. Don't even think about it. They could, they could be, this could be, this could be the last decade that this world will ever see, or it could be sooner than that. We may not have another 10 years. We don't never know. But are we ready for that situation? That's the situation. When we cultivate the attitude, when we get the attitude of the upper room people toward Jesus, toward what he said, and his church, we will move toward the outpouring of the Spirit. You know what? This building right here, it's, it's not the most fanciest building in town, but it's, the, it's very nice. It's nice. And the Sunday school department is over here is going to be second to none. When we get through with that, we got a beautiful side on the other side. This side is going to be just the, the same way, second to none. But let me tell you, we got to understand that it's more than the building. Don't ever decide that you're going to do something different. Cultivate an attitude. This building ought to be the most uh, precious building to you. It ain't your $300,000 home. That sucker's going to melt. It's going to fall down. It's going to melt with fervent heat. Melt with fervent heat. It ought to be your church house. You ought to, you ought to be clawing at the, at the ground when it starts getting close to church time. Instead of trying to make some kind, I just want to ask. Sometimes, I, man, I got preaching to myself the other day. Y'all, pardon me just for a minute. Let me let me talk to me a minute. I got to preaching to myself the other day, brother Tom Bowley, and I said, preacher, what are you going to tell him when he looks your way? What are you going to say when he said, past? He won't call me Pastor Creasy. He'll call me John or Mister Creasy. What am I going to tell him when he looks my way and, and wants an account of my stewardship? What am I going to say when he says, give me an account? Did you know Paul said it's required of a steward that a man be found faithful? What, are you, what am I going to say? Can I say, Lord, I've been faithful. I know a king one time said, I made all the sacrifice. I've done what you said. And the prophet said, no, you didn't because I hear too many sheep. You, no, you didn't mind God. You didn't, you didn't obey God. He went and killed all the enemy. He done all that. He took the sheep and kept them for a sacrifice when God said destroy them. And the prophet showed up. And, man, he was on, this, this king was on cloud nine. And he thought he, was just, he thought he was ready to go. The prophet rebuked him and said, you disobeyed God. What am I going to tell him? What am I going to tell him I was doing Sunday? 
But my cat guy answered that phone. He said, uh, voice on one end said, are you a preacher? And he said, I don't know. Who's calling? He said, heaven? And he began to quiz him on. He said, oh, that was just a, that was just a, yeah, I know. But it's going to happen one day. Amen. Give an account of your stewardship. The king said, or else thou shalt no longer be steward. Y'all remember reading all that? I'm in the book, y'all. I'm in the book. What am I going to tell him? I'm going to tell him, all oh, I was, you know, I had to go, you know, I had to, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know Lord, you know. You know, I, I, I'm a busy person. I'm busy, man. You ain't busy. I'm busy. What am I going to tell him when he says give an account? Am I ready to give an account of my stewardship tonight? Should the Lord come tonight, can I give an account and hear him say, well done? Or depart from me, ye worker. i got to cultivate that kind of attitude toward my church. If I missed as much church as some people did, you'd fire me. And you'd have every right to. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I know I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just sorry I had to say it. It wouldn't work. So the question is, is the Holy Ghost for the church today? That's the big question. And I got to tell you, it is. Acts chapter 2, and I'm fixing to close. I'm, 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 I got as nasty as I'm going to get. Verse 37, and when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said unto the Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent. You know, I didn't, I didn't preach that. The promise is unto you. Jesus confirms his word with signs following. We must. We don't have a choice, church. You do not have a choice. We have to become upper room people. We got to. If we're going to make it, if we're going to save Tipton County, our part of it, if we're going to do our part to save Tipton County, we have got to become upper room people. Expecting, continuing with one accord, continuing in prayer, fasting, and giving to God. Stand with me. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you tonight, speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and love Jesus a minute. Hallelujah. My wife's fixed to play a song. I give you an invitation if you want to talk to the Lord. You're not admitting your backslid or nothing like that. But if you want to talk to God, come on around the front. And let's talk to Jesus tonight. Whatever it takes to draw closer to you. That's what I'd be 